everybody, my name is Brian Kelly, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Hello, everybody, my name is Brian Kelly, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. Now, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. My name is Brian Kelly, and we have... Hello, everybody, my name is Brian Kelly, and welcome back to another edition of Talk of the Town. Play a lesson. Hello everybody, my name is Brian Kelly and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I have a special guest today. Matter of fact, it's my Aunt Margaret. This is Margaret Kelly. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. And the reason my Aunt Margaret is on the show today is because she got involved in a reunion. Her husband fought on the USS Benyon, a uh, battleship, um, a destroyer. Destroyer. A destroyer that was built in Boston. And um, they served in the Pacific in World War II, and she has been in charge of running a reunion. As a matter of fact, they're having a reunion this October, and they're going to be gathering in Quincy, Massachusetts, and going over to the Naval Yard. So Margaret asked me if I'd help her out with the reunion, and we started talking about it. So next thing I know, she's inundated me with pictures and uh, diaries and everything. <laughs> so I've been reading about the experiences of the men on this ship, and it was just fascinating, and I just thought that... Uh, we should share some of this. I know in the Milton Times, just uh, in the recent issue of the Milton Times here, they talked about Sweeney, uh, Joe Sweeney, um, and uh, when he, he was the gentleman that uh, was in the plane that dropped the bomb at Nagasaki that ended the war in the Pacific. And um, if it wasn't for that Miltonian, these two Miltonians may not be here. Absolutely. And so, uh, so her husband, Billy, or William Kelly, uh, served on the Benyon. And there was another gentleman from Milton. Dick Conley, he was a lieutenant. Dick Conley, a lieutenant, was on the So there were two gentlemen from Milton served on the Benyon. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about the Benyon. We'll talk a little bit about the reunion. And just, uh, just a reminder to folks how fortunate we are to even be here today. Um, and, you know, it actually, I, I've been spending a few hours, uh, you know, doing my homework on World War II. And, Man, oh man, it's just unbelievable. The, the stroke of luck in many places that we're even here. There's you know, such a fine line between mm -hmm. where what could have happened. So, uh, but anyways, the Benyon, folks, is just an amazing thing. Yeah, let me tell you a little bit background on the Benyon, all right? It was uh, built by the Boston Navy Yard. Uh, it was laid down on March uh, 19th, 1943, and it was launched on the 4th of July in 1943. Now the war had been going on now. Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. was born December 7th in 41. So this country went on, you know, just production, you know, side building. It was, a, um, they call it a Fletcher class uh, car, um, destroyer. destroyer. <clears throat> and um, there were like 175 of these built. And matter of fact, if you go into Boston to the Navy, you'll see the case in Young, and, which is there today, and that's a duplicate. That's a the sister ship. That's a sister it. ship yeah. to the Benyon. So, if you have an opportunity to go into the Navy Yard and tour that, um, you, you can think of some of the you know, the former Miltonians that are no longer with us <laughs> that served on the sister ship. And uh, these were made. These were went on radar pickets. They were, <coughs> excuse me, I have a little cold. They were uh, designed to protect the big battleships. They'd go on picket duty. They, they would uh, try to. Uh, <coughs> See the incoming planes. Um, they also had torpedoes on them. They would be the brunt. They'd get hit first before the battleships. So, <clears throat> but they could move faster, and that was um, they didn't have armor like a battleship, but they they could move faster, and uh, they didn't have as big a guns. That, but they were a different kind of a ship, and uh, they were fortunate to uh, return home. And excuse me. <coughs> oh man. Okay, so. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about this, uh, the Benyon and uh, some of the things that happened with these, these gentlemen. But anyways, how did you get involved? With, oh, matter of fact, what do you have right there, Mark? Oh, I have the, the um, invitation to the launching of the ship. Why don't you read that? The commanding officer, officers and crew request the honor of your presence at the commissioning of the USS Benyon at the Navy Yard Boston, Massachusetts, on Tuesday, the 14th of December, 1943, at 3 o'clock. No cameras allowed. Top secret. Right? Please present this card at the main gate. And what did you say about my uh, grandmother? And your, and your grandmother was present, and there were some men standing behind her, and they said, this ship is never going to make it. I worked on it, which was 
your uncle's mother, who wasn't too happy to hear that about her the son. Ship, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, um, I mean, I'm sure it was built better than that gentleman thought. <laughs> Obviously, it made it. And, uh, Thank God. But, um, okay, so, so how did you get involved with the reunion then? So tell me what happened. This reunion, you mean? No, just the reunions oh, in oh, general. Because um, Billy met Dick Conley, right? And they thought they would run a reunion because it had been forty years, and whether it was only the two of them. So this was eighty-three. This was eighty-three, and Dick worked for the um, VA, and Billy thought that he would have access to a lot of the records for ven veterans who now might be collecting, you know, benefits. Unfortunately. He died at St. Elizabeth's Church attending the funeral of a friend of his. So that left Billy and me. So Billy, uh, by default, ended up taking over the <laughs> reunion and tracking down these he sailors. Had, he had to because he had already put ads in the news, in the military magazine. So, I mean... Well, they had to. It, his it, reputation it, would have it gone. It was launched. It was <laughs> launched. How many people uh, served on the, uh, the Benyons, you know? Well, all in all, 600, but not at one time. What did, what, what did it hold? How many? Let's 300, see. I think. Around 300, okay. And so... Um, and it was in some major campaigns. Oh, definitely. In yeah. the Philippines, mm -hmm. Okinawa. Okinawa. Was it in Iwo Jima? Um, no. 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 Itinian. Yeah, um, Saragato. Sarag devil. <laughs> Saragato uh, Straits, Straits in the Philippines. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's where they had a battle, and they actually sunk a, um, a battleship, a, um, a uh, Japanese battleship. What was the name of the battleship? The Yamashiro. And uh, what, one thing the destroyers had at this time, which was different than the battleships, the battleships were meant to fight other battleships. And uh, they had the big guns and, uh, and they'd loft these giant munitions and hopefully pierce the deck to, that's how they would explode the other ships. The, 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 uh, the destroyers had torpedo tubes, so, and uh, I saw a great, a great quote, uh, let's see. Oh, where did I do with that quote? There's a great, the fleet destroyer force, um, this, so, yeah, so here's a little background, okay? So as soon as, battleships became a big thing in World War II. Coming into World War II was like a status symbol of a country to have a big battleship. And there, were, there was like an arms race with battleships. But as the war clouds appeared on the horizon, everyone began to build new classes of battleships and the race began anew. They kind of had like a cap on them for a while. Well, air power was gaining uh, new uh, importance. The battleship was soon eclipsed and lost its role as the primary fleet force pro uh, projector, uh, protector to be um, replaced by the aircraft carrier. So the aircraft carrier became the number one piece of equipment on the seas, okay? The destroyer, on the other hand, became the fleet workhorse. Not only did it retain its job of destroying um, other uh, torpedo boats, it also became the primary anti-submarine hunter until its smaller brother, the, the destroyer escort, came into being. So they would uh, use depth charges and try to clear the, uh, prevent the submarines from getting close to the battleships. And then, um, so, um, but here's the other question. It says, it's far easier to sink a ship, even a battleship with a torpedo, than pound it to pieces with a large caliber battleship gun. <laughs> <laughs> they said, it's also easier you can shoot a gun, a bullet, or a projectile at a ship and let air in, or you can shoot a torpedo and let water in. <laughs> What's going to sink that yeah. sooner? So, you know, they didn't have the thickness of steel that a battleship had, but they could move, and they um, had the torpedo tube. So they'd be on the flank, they'd be outside of the fleet and uh, protecting the bigger ships. And um, so uh, the Benyon did that and did it well. And there was some, we can rec uh, recollect some, uh, we have some uh, diaries from men that served on the ship. And you can see, I, I have to tell you the story. I remember, I think it was 82, I bought a Honda Accord. And um, I had been living in Florida, and we moved up to Massachusetts. And uh, I remember visiting my Uncle Billy, he was a firefighter, so we went to the station. And I had my uh, little Honda Accord there. And uh, he just shook his head, you know. And, I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand, you know? <laughs> but in reading these diaries, you know, it's hard to believe that, you know, it's hard to believe that there wasn't even more disdain. Because when you see the carnage and the things that they experienced, you know, how can you not have that anger? 
you know, and you see your friends blown up mm -hmm. and things like that. So obviously he had lived a different life than myself and he saw some things that made him, uh, you know, bitter uh, in some regard, you know. I mean, I, he, I never saw him holding a grudge, but the, you could see that his war experience came out when he saw that car. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and Margaret to this day still drives an American-made American. car. <laughs> and obviously, obviously, Uncle Billy robbed the cradle when he met you. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, well, so, so Billy and, and you, because of Billy, so you by default got involved with the exactly. reunions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how many reunions have there been? 32 or 33. I think this one may be the 33rd. 33rd. Okay. And um, so your husband helps run these reunions, and you travel to many reunions, many, right? We saw a lot of the country because of these reunions, because the way it, it's, it was handled, whoever volunteered, the people would go. So it, they, people from all over the country would volunteer to run a reunion, and they'd go. Now, you said Billy didn't talk much about the war, but the reunions kind of brought that out in a lot of the men. It, it's, it did, yeah. Most of the, the wives had told me through the years their husbands never talked about it until the reunion, and at the reunion they all started talking to each other, and then probably when they went home they continued. Well, you know... Uh, it's just amazing what they experienced. I was, uh, I was looking through here. Let's see here. October 25th seems to be a, a big, um, a big day. Uh, was one of those battles. And what was the name of that straits? The straits of <laughs> Sergio or Gato? You're or doing Gato. it. It was a. Uh, well, anyways, well, I understand in World War II the Japanese were went south and were trying to take over all the uh, colonies. You know, I mean Germany. Own some of the island chains, and uh, you know the French and the English, and um, Japan wanted to expand, and they went into China, and um, then they went south, and you know they were being sanctioned by the United States and other countries because of their activity in China, and um, but then when Japan watched what was happening in Europe and the weakening of Britain um, after the Battle of Britain and everything, they um, they found an opportune time to, to go south, and uh, they started invading all the islands. They were concerned. One of their concerns was just before uh, uh, Pearl Harbor was the U.S. was in the Philippines and had a fleet in the Philippines, had some of their ships and uh, had a good relationship with the Philippines. And I think they were in Luzon, Luzon, how do you pronounce it? Luzon, L-U-Z-O-N, I think, Luzon, Luzon, Luzon I think. <laughs> But anyways, so they had to make a decision. If they continue to um, take over territory in Southeast Asia, would the Americans sit by and do nothing? And when they thought about it and thought about it, they said, you know, we can't take that chance. So they decided and they planned the attack on Pearl Harbor. And so, um, and at Pearl Harbor, which was a complete surprise attack, so many of you have seen, you know, Torah, 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 and the different movies about it. Yeah, they didn't know that the Japanese could uh, carry torpedoes on their planes, you know, and even the landing strip at in uh, Honolulu, Oahu, they had um, all the planes were lined up. They were worried about, you know, um, you know, people um, sabotaging the planes, so they didn't have them in the type of order that you'd have them to protect them from an air attack. They had them all lined up in a row, and the, and the Japanese said it was like shooting ducks in a row. Hundreds of planes they took out. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a matter of fact, the Benyon, speaking of Pearl Harbor, is Merv Benyon was the, uh, he was the gentleman, uh, he, Captain Merv Benyon was killed in action during the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. He was in command of the West Virginia. Uh, Captain Benyon was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. I guess when they were taking him off the ship, he didn't want them to take him off the ship when he was injured and, yeah. you know, mm. he, he died from the injuries. But, so, um, but anyways, so here back in uh, we're back in the Philippines now because after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese continued their reign of terror throughout the uh, Southeast Asia, and um, it's surprising they didn't really get to uh, Australia because mm -hmm. they were trying, you know. And the menu was involved in a lot of the a lot of the battles <laughs> over there, protecting Australia, the supply routes because Americans were bringing supplies into into Australia. They didn't want to lose that, and. Um, so on October 25th and 44, so I'm going to read some of this. I'm going to read it here. You can understand is um, written, you know, 
it's not the perfect perfect English and everything, and this has all been transcribed and stuff. But you get it, you just of what's going on. So this is October twenty fifth, forty four. But that was written at the time. Written at the time, so you can read some not other stuff that's a little more embellished. Yeah. Here you're getting the the feel for it, and this gentleman says, uh, "We're going after some of the Jap fleet in the Strait. They are attacking our transport. Two cruisers and eight destroyers. We have six battle wagons. Battle wagons are battleships." Six of our cruisers and four English uh, cruisers and about 25 destroyers and uh, four PT boats. Um, he says the crew of the Banyan was saying their prayer when we went in to make a torpedo attack. So this is when they got the Yamashino, or what the yeah. Japanese battleship. They had to go in. We went in to, uh, to 6,000 yards. The part of the Jap fleet we were after, they, they were after our baby carriers. As a matter of fact, the Japanese sunk the USS Princess in that battle. Um, Let's see, it took uh, 16 hours, they were, at, they were at general quarters, you know what I mean, like mm -hmm. on, on a lot, yeah. um, to get two battle wagons, two battleships, two cruisers and one destroyer. Um, it goes on, it says, uh, Jap planes are attacking and the cruiser and the destroyer are firing. Our planes, 30 torpedo planes, 30 dive bomber attacks and uh, attack part of the Jap fleet. Two battle wagons were set afire. One cruiser's on fire, one destroyer disabled. And he goes on to talk, this is the day I will never forget. October 25th, 1944, it was a Friday. I will never forget this day when we met the Japanese fleet in the Philippine Islands. They tried to stop us, but we stopped them in our sinking them. Now, and I go on to some other things here. I see that, uh, now where is this here? This is in Okinawa, and, um, and this gentleman is describing a battle there. He says, uh, later the Japs came in to attack. They were coming from all directions. Um, they were coming at us and we shot all three of them and they said we got five. The, the, ship, the ships were shooting in all directions. We got lots of hits from our own ship's gunfire. We had one man killed and three wounded. A 40 millimeter bullet hit number two stack by 43 gun and sprayed part of the gun crew. Mobley was killed. Robinson got his arm shot up. Fury got hit in the shoulder. Bovin got hit on the left side from shoulder to foot. Mm. Now, you met um, Robinson, Robinson, right? He got his mm. arm shot up. Uh, shot off. Shot, yeah. shot, shot off. Shot off. Okay, so, um, so you met him. Tell me a little story there. All right. it, probably the 10th reunion or so, Robinson came with um, the doctor who was on the ship at the time and who saved his life because he operated on him, you know, to save his life, and then he went on to an, a, another ship. But um, they had never seen each other. Wow! So uh, the reunion brought them it, together, and that was like 50 years later by now, you know. Wow! That the the doctor was Glenn Brown. Doctor Glenn Brown. Yeah. And uh, so continuing is oh, this gentleman says the. Uh, the wagon Tennessee got hit by a crash dive, a Jap suicide. Remember, this is getting later in the war, and as the Japanese became more desperate, they, um, they resorted to the suicide bombers. And uh, this is something, of course, that we had never seen or experienced before, you know? So, um, so here he says, the Tennessee got hit by a crash dive, a Jap, a Jap suicide, uh, the cruiser and a destroyer. We went alongside the destroyer to help put out her fire and gave them our doctor. So it must have been doctor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so That's they lent their Brown. doctor. Yeah. Uh, because their doctor was killed. The DD-77 was hit in number two gun and came out on the other side. It killed lots of men and wounded, lo and wounded lots of men. Boy, talk about a mess. That sure was one. We saw bodies badly wounded and some dead, and lots of them were burned. I saw legs laying around in someone's head and all the pieces of a man's body, of men's bodies. When we came alongside, we gave them our hose and, and we uh, pumped the water over and, made, and uh, put out the fire. We gave masks to fight the fire and the smoke and some medical supplies for the wounded. I saw men lay all over the deck on the ships, blood all over the ship. The pilot was laying on the ship also. Men were bleeding from head on down. Boy, was this a bloody mess. The men were going crazy and working hard and fast. Boy, things do not look good at the present. It looks like they are trying to get rid of us. They were part of a task force. So he's saying the Japanese are trying to get mm -hmm. rid of our task force. And this, uh, this was at Okinawa. So uh, they are making a big try and costing lots of planes and cost us lots of destroyers and men. 
boy, I'm scared to sleep at nights. We got 70 planes all day and maybe more. We got three or five, which makes us 12 or 15 planes. Them damn Japs. <laughs> I can kill everyone and not feel sorry for any one of them after what I saw today. They killed one and wounded about four on our ship. I saw legs, arms, and heads. You know, so what these, you know, World War II veterans came back and we didn't hear these stories because they didn't. Uh, 17. Yeah. They were you know, 17 and 18 years old, these kids. You can understand. Think about it. If you have a 17 year old or had a 17 year old right, when they were 17, what do you think of them? Yeah. What, what did you think of your children when they were 17? <laughs> Not sending them to walk. They That's were babies, right? Them. Absolutely. Yeah. We were worried about them staying out past midnight. <laughs> Never mind. I mean, it was a different world. It, it was, was a different a, world. Yeah. Yeah. It was a scary. It was a scary time. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's just unbelievable. You know, um, here's another another part. He says here, this is April 30th, 1945. They're at general quarters. So, you know, they're alarmed. It says, we have a raid of Jap planes. Ten Jap planes. Them damn Jap attack <laughs> us and just about hit us on the first two or three runs. The last plane we shot down fell alongside the ship and some parts took off our lifelines. Tangling cable broke our inboard lifeline and also did some other damage as holes in our deck. Talk about part of plane. That damn Jap plane had all kinds of parts of his plane on our ship. From motor, radio, wing, tail, all kinds of pieces. More than the other day. He also hit gun five where I'm in, <laughs> but didn't even hurt anyone and also covered our gun with oil. Boy, it's some feeling to see a plane coming on at us and think, well, this is the end of me. And what do you have and there? And here's a piece of, the, of one of the planes. It's, it says Jap Zero on it. And what was the date of that? The date of that was um, April 29th. So this is April 29th and 30th. So this is a part of the Jap Zero plane that hit the USS Benyon that had two men from Milton on it. That's right. That's unbelievable. And uh, I, if I recall talking to Billy, that you, know, I, that, you know, I think he might have mentioned something about this day and me having this piece, I'm, mm -hmm. I, if I recall. I always thought it was, he, I thought he was saying he had a piece of shrapnel in front oh. of him. He has a piece of shrapnel, <laughs> but not in him, yeah. which is the better kind to have. So, I mean, there's a little real World War II his, history, you know, a Jap Zero, uh, 1945. So that's unbelievable, you know yeah. what I mean? So. Man, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And then, uh, so, it was quite a, quite an experience for these people. I, um, I have here, uh, I was telling my neighbor, we were going to be talking about the USS Benyon and the reunion coming up in October, and that it was built in Boston and stuff. And uh, he, his father, so I was talking to Brian Stafford, and uh, his father was part of the occupation of Japan after the surrender. So they, he went to Japan and uh, he brought back he brought back this and this is a Japanese war flag uh, that of course only flew until 1945 and there's different flags you can see this one the uh, rising sun is in the middle mm -hmm. you know so this was the uh, with, let me see here I got a note on it this was uh, yeah this is the war flag of the Imperial Japanese Army from 1870 to 1945. Now the naval ensign was similar, but the, the round sphere was to the side. Mm -hmm. and, uh, right. and the, um, so there were some differences. And a matter of fact, I think during the, uh, was it, uh, something happened and um, talking about, uh, well, due to the flag being used by the Imperial Japanese military in Japan's actions during World War II, many South Koreans and the Chinese find the flag to be offensive. Because of this, the use of the flag is considered to be controversial. For example, during the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Japanese fans were warned not to fly the flag as it would cause offense and trouble with both Chinese and South Koreans. So, uh, so this is from Robert Stafford who was uh, in Japan during the occupation. And so, uh, you know, as we started the show, we talked about uh, Mr. Sweeney. I know, you know, there will always be controversy surrounding the use of the atom bombs, but 
it ended the war. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and not only saved American lives, it saved Japanese lives too. Absolutely. And it's sad that we have to resort to, to these things, but you know what? I mean, we didn't ask for World War yeah. II. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And, and, uh, so it's just, uh, it's just unbelievable what some of these people had to experience uh, in order to give us the freedom that we uh, enjoy today. You know, I get up in the morning and I think I'm having a bad day, and then, and then I think about the experiences of the men on this ship, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, so tell me, Margaret, uh, any, uh, any stories that Billy uh, shared with you that you want to share? Not, not really. Like I said, he didn't, you know, talk that much about it. And yeah. No, he was just glad to get home. And he did meet his brother Paul, though. Well, he didn't. He missed him. Paul, Paul Kelly was on the, the St. Paul, and they were docked. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they were docked at the same place. They were supposed to meet, and something happened, and they couldn't, you know, so uh. they missed each other. Hey, Mike, would you do me a favor? Will you put some of the pictures that we have on? We'll, look, we'll close out the show and show people. There's a picture of the USS Ben. You can see it's got, like, the camouflage on it, which is a... Uh, and they talked about it here sometimes, how the, the planes were coming over and didn't even see them. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. And now, if you stop here, now the bottom, I don't know, folks at home, you look, look at your screen, it'll be... The, the gentleman with the, on, the, on the first row, uh, the, on the right, with the hat. On the first row down, squatting down with the hat. That's your husband. Yeah. Uh, that's my Uncle Billy Kelly, okay? And uh, again, some more pictures of the sailors on the ship. And, and is that Billy there across the equator? I think I it think is. I think it is, yeah. So um, I think they call them polywogs or something yeah. like that. They, mm -hmm. they had some kind of initiation, and there they are crossing the equator. and. Uh, during the, doing some kind of initiation. I don't know who's going to be initiated there. Now, this was what year was this? Margaret? This was 1983. That was the first reunion. And, and but the Constitution is behind you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you're planning on bringing the crew this year to the Constitution yeah, again. That's right. Mm -hmm. And right now, how many confirmed veterans do you have? Only four. Only right four because they're dying. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's not many left. So. Yeah. Maybe you'll get a couple more at well, the most, 10? Hopefully. Uh, oh, oh, if we get 10, that would be amazing. Right. So, and so the family's going to come, so here, you can see some more pictures. Yeah, These that's, are, that's Billy right in the beginning there. Oh, that's Billy right there. Okay. And, um, and there's Billy on, uh, on the tail of the ship, uh, holding the tail of the ship with the colored tie. It's my uncle Billy, your, your husband. And uh, there's, uh, you can see they, they're almost like putting a notch in your belt. They're, they're making a a record of how many they've uh, taken down. You can see the... Didn't look like a fun place to be. No. <laughs> look at just, just kids. The helmets don't even fit their heads. <laughs> they had one guy on the ship who was only 15. Oh. And when he saw what he was getting into. I mean, he was on the ship. He let them know he was only 15. <laughs> he was the smartest. <laughs> they, they, they sent him home. <laughs> he was the smartest one of the bunch. <laughs> and you're thinking of what your kids are doing, huh? Yeah, we're I don't know which ages. island that was, but there were not a lot of them. And if you read about World War II and Guadalcanal and the Bataan Death yeah, March, March and yeah. the things, oh, it's just incredible. And they were lucky. They were lucky that they uh, survived. Oh, well, I'll say. You can see the cigarette. Yeah. They probably mm -hmm. given it to them in the rations. Oh, that oh, was common sure. in the military, yeah. you know? Yeah, And there you go. And that, they were, that's probably beside one of the carriers, like the USS Princess or something like that. I don't know who this gentleman yeah, is. I, I, I don't either. Yeah. Having a little that, fun in the Honolulu yeah. jail. <laughs> you know, it's uh, 70 years since uh, World War II ended. And, uh, we forget. Yeah, we I forget, know, you know, I know, yeah. I mean, in those jungles over there, talking about, you know, there were crocodiles, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. insects mm -hmm. of all different kinds, yeah. and lizards, and all kinds of snakes. Yeah. And, it was not the greatest place, you know. And that's a map. That shows uh, all the different places where, where the Benyon uh, traveled and uh, all the uh, campaigns that it fought in. And there's a score. You can see the score 
for the war. And it has lists all the things. And that talks about Merv Benyon and who he was. He was mortally wounded in, uh, at Pearl Harbor. There it is again. Can you imagine living? Now here, this is an interesting, see the picture. So there's, there's an actual photo from, from the battle. Now I don't know if that's an American ship or a Japanese ship. We, obviously we don't know. Yeah. But uh, they said that many times when they did uh, well, knock that, out that a- That dog was their mascot. There you go. Well, when they knocked out a, a Japanese ship, uh, they, the survivors would be on lifeboats firing at the Americans. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, they, they fought, didn't they, they, didn't, yeah. they wanted to be mm -hmm. killed. They yeah. were like, you know. And that was their, their catch. mascot. Yeah, or something? Yeah, well, the dog was their mascot on the ship. So what is this? Um, I don't know what they called that. A fighting rooster or something. Yeah. You know, I don't know. And you can see the enemy tank is getting larger on there. You know. So folks, hey, you know, just a little uh, information about uh, how the war has had an impact, even here in Milton, and uh, it's how people from Milton served and help protect our country and it just uh, you know it's reading about uh, Mr. Sweeney and his experience and stuff it just uh, brought, brought to home the importance of uh, uh, we, you know buy an American buy an American <laughs> <laughs> I got a collar I, I do I still have a Jeep I still have a Jeep <laughs> I got quite a few Japanese cars you know but man oh man just unbelievable but uh, thank you but um, so what are your plans this year for the uh, reunion? You're going to bring them over there? We are going to, the to Navy go yard. to the Navy Yard, and we're going to go to the Constitution and the Cass and Young, and we're going to take a, a city tour of Boston mm -hmm. on, on a bus. Right. And then the next day, we're going to go to um, the Kennedy Library. Right. And if they want, they can go to Ted Kennedy's, which the I heard. New, the new, the uh, new Senate one. chamber that they reproduced. Uh, reproduct I was talking to somebody today who was had people over there and they said it was fabulous. Fabulous, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we have a banquet Saturday evening and go home. They go home Sunday. And like Margaret said, these folks want to go to bed early, so yeah. it's not going to be a ruckus crowd. No, it's not. Yeah. Although they'll be bringing maybe some of their children. Oh, there'll they'll be it, about 40 or 50 people all together, yeah. right? The, the extended family. Yeah, so, some of them probably can't travel alone. They can't, most of them, right. the, the shipmates. So um, their children, escort them, which is great that they do that, you know? Well, there's not many more years left for no, these survivors yeah. of World War II, yeah. so mm -hmm. we're fortunate that uh, you're hosting them. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be And fun. Mr. Stafford said he wants to help, too. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> and his father, I got his father's papers right here. His father, 17. Yeah. 17 mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. He got, you yeah. know, got, the, yeah. got the little thing right here. He's... Robert Stafford, and it's you know he came in. Can you imagine, 17, 17 years old? Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, he was a rifleman, automatic rifleman. World War II Victory Medal, the Army of Occupation Medal for Japan. And uh, and they say you know there's not many much memorabilia from the Pacific Campaign. Uh huh. Really? Flags were one thing. You know what I mean? But what was there to take back from these mm -hmm. islands? And, yeah. You know, you know, other than shrapnel and you know. I mean, the Pacific is littered with debris from yeah. World War II. Oh, yeah. you know? mm. But uh, unbelievable. Well, folks, I, I do appreciate you taking the time to, to visit with us today and uh, count your blessings if you're here. <laughs> if you're watching this show, it's because of some of these people. And uh, next time you see a veteran, Say thank, thank you. them for their service. Yeah. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.